Okay, so thank you so much for attending today's panel titled Highlighting Local, Global, Personal, and Professional Social Justice and Civic Engagement Efforts Through ePortfolio. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to our speakers. We have Lucy Smith, Emily Thompson, and Martin Gaussing from Salt Lake City Community College. Perfect, thank you, Amy, appreciate it. So we have had welcome everybody to our session and we will all um, be introducing ourselves in our e-portfolios here in just a minute, but we did first want to go around the room and have folks just briefly introduce themselves. We have several folks who've introduced themselves via the chat, which is just your name and um, what institution you're with, but we were also just hoping to briefly hear what your experience with ePortfolio is. So if we could just do that briefly, that would be that would be great. Um, let's start, uh, Jeff, with you. You're with Digication? Yes, hi, uh, I'm Jeff Yan. I'm, I'm one of the co-founders of Digication. Uh, I've been doing portfolio for a while. I'm not going to say how long because it's a little too long. Um, and um, that's that's who I am. I'm coming, uh, joining from North Carolina. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, Pamela. Hi, I'm Pamela McVeigh. I'm from Ursuline College in Cleveland. And um, my experience with ePortfolios is almost completely theoretical. We're taking the uh, a group of people through the um, ePortfolio Institute through uh, the AACU, and uh, we're in the middle of that process. Great, thank you, Pamela. Debbie? Hi, I'm Debbie H. Minor. I'm at IUPUI, although right now I'm in Kentucky. Um, and I've used ePortfolios at the course level and then across theme learning communities in leadership training and other environments. And I'm having the opportunity to serve interim position as a co-director of ePortfolios. And I think the really transformative thing about ePortfolios is the relationships you get to build with students by giving them more control um, of the artifacts and then how they want to shape for the public what they're learning. Great, thank you. Um, do you want to just briefly introduce yourself and your experience with ePortfolio? Hi, <laughs> I'm Kimon. I am the uh, ePortfolio coordinator. Uh, Emily Thompson is my boss. Um, my experience with ePortfolio started when I was a student. Um, I was required to do it for an uh, English class, and it was a way for me to track like the assignments and stuff that I had for that class. Um, and I continued using it um, all the way until I completed my degree. And uh, I use it for like um, a social justice class where I posted up different articles that I, um, I did. But I I did it very differently that I'm doing it now. <laughs> ePortfolio is kind of new to me because the way I did it wasn't the way how it was actually taught. And I learned that when I first started working here. <clears throat> so the concepts of ePortfolio is still new to me, but yeah. Great, thank you, Kim. Dana, can you just briefly introduce yourself and your experience with ePortfolio? Yes, yeah, so my name is Dana Luna, and I am at Southwestern University in Georgetown, Texas, which is right north of Austin. And um, I won't tell you like Jeff how far back it goes for me that I very first understood what a neat portfolio was because you'd know I was older than him. But I was an elementary school teacher back in the day before I came to Southwestern, and I um, our performance evaluation was an e-portfolio by the time I was exiting the, the education system. And I understood the power of really being reflective through the whole year of understanding um, how you display what you've learned and how you've influenced and changed through the year. And it wasn't about the students. As a teacher, we're always evaluating the students. It was about our performance and how we grew as a professional. So when I began working at Southwestern 14 years ago, 
um, I noticed that there were students who, I'm the internship, uh, assistant director of internships. And um, I noticed that students would come in and they had this fabulous work, but they had no place to showcase it. And came across Google sites and just started recommending as I was advising students that they should have a place to house their, because a lot of them, as one of uh, the other people on the, um, here said, that their students were, or, or maybe it was a presentation before, the students were double major, a lot of students were double majors. So we would have a business and art student. Where do they house all of those, all that fabulous work to show their diversity and started encouraging students to build e-portfolios and then kept, continue to get all of this wonderful feedback on how the employers really valued that and they felt good about it. So as I was, thinking about adding a requirement to the academic internships uh, because we needed 30 more hours for students to be able to get a fourth credit. Uh, and we're all going through this ePortfolio institution. I'm piloting it for Southwestern. There's a team of six of us that are all attending this conference and I'm piloting it with the academic interns, which is about 50 per semester of doing an e building an ePortfolio throughout their semester and it really is outward going and um, I mean it was outward facing so it's really for employers to see what students like see their writing samples see the internships the ex other experiences they have and a place where they're uh, about me and their resumes so that's kind of the angle I come at it from not really the the um, faculty side but more I mean there is some element of assessment on them showing their reflection. But I'm really interested in hearing and learning as much as I can before I implement that this fall. Great, thank you. We'll go ahead and keep going just briefly if you can introduce yourself and your experience with ePortfolio. Let's see, let's go ahead and go with Meg. Hi, uh, I'm at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville and we are also doing the AACNU Institute and we are just getting ready to launch our pilot ePortfolio program with our new um, alternative gen ed pathway that sort of draws in community engagement and small research teams and interdisciplinary coursework. So very much looking forward to this. Great, thank you, Meg. How about Suzanne? And hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Hi, yes, I'm Suzanne Bartels. I'm at Guilford College. I'm the director of library and learning technologies there, and also part of an AACNU ePortfolio Institute team of six. Um, we're working on developing our strategy for um, introducing what we're calling Folio um, through um, our general education curriculum, which has been redesigned and recast, um, hopefully in an enticing and creative way. Called, it's called the Collaborative Quest. And um, we're, we're very excited to be um, working on something that we feel is gonna be really fitting in well with our objectives at Guilford. Um, you know, our student success objectives and have really been gaining so much from not only this conference, but our participation in the Institute. Great, thanks, Suzanne. How about Gracie? Yes, so good afternoon. My name is Gracie Williams from Tarrant County College in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, so we use ePortfolio for assessment for GNA program review and also for co-curricular. So we started about a year ago and we're also part of the AACNU Institute for ePortfolio. Great, thank you. And then we just have a couple more folks. We have M Marlon. Yes. Hello, uh, my name is Marlon Moat, um, and I am actually uh, with a team from Tarrant County College, and Gracie is um, also part of our team. Um, and we've been working on this journey actually for um, going on two years in terms of development and actually learning from uh, many of the colleagues uh, in this institute, um, um, actually from, from your uh, college, Salt Lake, Community College, we had uh, some folks that participated in a, a showcase um, a little over 
uh, I guess it'll be almost two years now uh, in terms of uh, showing faculty the uh, power of ePortfolio um, and also uh, the potential uh, with students. And so we've really come a long way in terms of um, our piloting of ePortfolio at Tarrant County College and continue to grow um, at, a, at a good pace in terms of scaling. Um, and I think it, it's really helpful to have this networking opportunity with everybody here uh, to learn more. So we, we all have to do that at least like once a week or once a day, right? Where you talk and you're on mute. It's, it's like only happens via Zoom. I think we have one more person. Do you have, I don't know that you introduced yourself. Yeah, no, I didn't. Thank you. Sorry, I came a few minutes late. My um, Zoom decided to restart and had to be reinstalled on my computer as I was entering in almost on time. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Deanne Urbaniak Lesh, and I'm with St. Catherine University in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, we have a team here from the AAC New Institute as well, and we're super excited because we are very new in starting this process of thinking about ePortfolio. We've had e different departments and programs have had ePortfolio in the past, but we don't have a system-wide, um, university-wide uh, approach to this, and so we're really wanting to build it in as we launch what we call our Compass Experience, um, which are ways that students can link the curricular and the co-curricular. Um, and they're four years or, or, or different. We have grad and undergrad programs, um, associate degree um, as well. So I'm excited to be here and my, my fo the focus of my work is engaged learning, um, service learning, community engaged learning, um, as well as research and other areas of high impact practice. Great, thanks Deanne. That's a good segue. I'll go ahead and introduce myself a bit more and then I'll turn some time over to my colleagues. I'm pointing to them as if like you all have the same boxes next to you. Um, I'll turn the time over in this moment to Emily and Martin, but I'm Lucy Smith. And again, I'm from Salt Lake Community College and I'm the Director of Engaged Learning. So I also support high impact practices in the curriculum, in the curriculum, primarily through faculty development. So community engaged learning, formerly known as service learning, and then also study away. So study abroad and domestic study. Um, folks would also like to, to see more done with undergraduate research at the college, but we'll see where that goes. And then um, briefly, I, I use ePortfolio in our programs for a lot of different things. We have a very well integrated ePortfolio program and Emily may um, talk about that just a little bit. But, um, oh, we use them. I, use, I find them to be very valuable when we're reviewing like scholarship. I process a lot of scholarships for study away, community engaged learning. And I really find them to be very valuable to give me a, a much broader picture of the student beyond what they just write on, on their application. Um, so I really uh, enjoy being able to do that. And then I also lead assessment efforts for our civic literacy learning outcome. And we assess um, e-portfolios of community engaged student, students uh, via their um, e-portfolio. So, okay, Emily, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, hi everyone. I am Emily Thompson. I'm the new ePortfolio manager at Salt Lake Community College. Um, I actually only have about three and a half months of experience with ePortfolios. Um, so I'm actually leaning a lot on Martin and Kimon here to help me learn how we do ePortfolio at the college. Lucy's been helping me with the service learning piece. Um, I do have experience doing a portfolio as a student because I'm an Evergreen State College student. And Evergreen State College doesn't have grades. And what they do is they write evaluations of each student and then you curate your work in a portfolio. Um, we did it before there was an e-version, but it's kind of cool now to come full circle and be doing the e-portfolio process. Um, yeah, so I created my first e-portfolio to apply for this job in December and you'll get to see that. And then I'll go ahead and hand it over to Martin. Hi there, I'm Martin Galsine. I'm an ePortfolio specialist here at Salt Lake Community College for almost two years now. Well, I've been making ePortfolios and websites for almost five. Um, it's been quite an experience here. We've gone through many programs and I'm just happy to be here with all of you and to share our ePortfolios with you. And I'll hand it back over to my superiors. We're, we're very equity minded. We actually avoid those terms. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Let's see, Emily. Did you want to do the group agreement, or do you want to skip that so we can keep keep moving here? Yeah, I say we go ahead and keep moving. I'll just say um, one of the things we talk about a lot is the importance of creating a container when we're really focusing on equity work. Um, 
And so we'll just name like that's a piece that we continuously try to work on. And I'll share an example of our team's container in a little bit. Great. Uh, oh, sorry, Emily. Finish if you wanted to. I was just going to hand it back to you, Lucy. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to, we're each going to briefly share our e-portfolios. Um, before I do that, I'm actually going to throw mine in the chat too. So if folks want to um, check them out, they can, because they're, my, uh, I believe all of ours are probably publicly available, but I'll throw out the chat if you want to check it out anymore. And I'm just going to briefly go through some of the equity components of my e-portfolio. And I, I, um, I, I love ePortfolio, first of all. Um, we are in education, and I really liked education compared to what we used to do, which was a mishmash of free programs like Wix and Weebly and all that, and with ads. And I, I really appreciate education, and I appreciate the ease of use. And I, um, as a professional, really find value in ePortfolio and being able to highlight and showcase and document all of the work that I do as a professional. Again, I value it incredibly for students, but I also, as a professional, very much value it. And um, so I, I use it in many different ways to be able to highlight some of the, the work that I, that I do. Um, Right about myself, my goals, uh, my teaching, professional activity, et cetera, and the service that I do. But really what we wanted to talk about is a bit more about our equity, um, equity work because that's the focus um, of this session. And so in terms of equity, it, as a college, we are very equity focused and that has really come into a, um, more of a laser point focus in the past couple of years. And so um, when I was creating my e-portfolio and I was chatting with some um, faculty members, they said, you know, an equity, you need an equity statement just front and center. And I am a very equity minded person. So I do, I like, I just, yeah, I really like having an equity statement that helps guide my work, um, guide what I want to do, right, in um, community engaged learning with study away. Um, like with uh, critical service learning, for example, which is the, the equity focus in the community engaged learning world, and free trade learning, which is a very equity focused um, framework for study abroad. So yeah, I have my, my equity statement right front and center on my welcome page. And then um, also on my teaching page, I'm, I'm also an adjunct faculty member, so I'm a full-time staff member, and then I also teach. And so that's the other place where a lot of my um, equity work shows up, right, is in my teaching philosophy, in that I feel that experiential education and critical education theories um, are paramount, as well as a social change model of leadership. And I, I really see myself, right, as a facilitator I always, of learning. I always have. I've never been into the I'm the sage on the sage. I know everything. Like, that's just never been my thing, even before I had a really strong well-developed equity focus. I've always wanted to partner with people um, to be able to achieve different things and partner in equitable um, ways versus, I know everything, I'm the leader. That's just not my, not my thing. So you can see that, yeah, my teaching philosophy and my teaching objectives um, and then methodologies are really very much, and that's it also comes from my um, background, which is as an as a experiential educator. So it's something that as an experiential educator, often you do see yourself as a facilitator, not as the sage on the stage. And I continue that in my work. So um, so that's just a little bit of my, my um, adjunct faculty work. And then the um, community engaged learning also in the past years, I've been with the college now for um, nine years, actually, and I just, I, I love the college, and I, I love our, the people that we work with. I love the students. We're the most diverse institution in the state of Utah, and um, I just, I work with amazing, smart people who care about social issues, and that's one of the reasons I really love community-engaged learning is because I, I work with faculty who really want to leverage the content in their classroom to be, and they want to be able to expose students and get, help students grapple, grapple with um, social issues that are related to their discipline. And that for me is a very powerful thing. And so in the community engaged learning program through the years, I've really focused, like tweaked out my rubrics for the course, um, for um, course proposals, new course proposals, existing course proposals, um, tweak them to have more of a, uh, an equity and social justice bend. Um, same thing with our, I've done, a, as I mentioned, a lot of work around our 
um, of assessment around our college-wide civic literacy learning outcome. And that we, it took us a long time to create a rubric um, that could help frame this learning outcome. We used AAC and use their civic engagement value rubric as a basis for our rubric, as well as IUPUIs. I think we had somebody here from IUPUI. I have to do a shout out to IUPUI because you guys are awesome. Um, I use the, the civic minded graduate. We, well, we use that also as a basis for, for our rubric um, to be able to, that we now use to assess, again, the civic literacy learning outcome. So, um, yeah, so that I think that's that's about it. I think I'm out of time. That's I just wanted to briefly highlight the equity components of my e portfolio. I'm going to stop sharing, and then I'm going to turn the time over to Emily, and let Emily share. All right. Um, so I just shared my e portfolio in the chat for you all. And um, when Lucy and I sat down to do e portfolios, it was kind of interesting because. I couldn't find, I was trying to look for like, where's my equity statement? Where's this thing that explains my values around ePortfolio? And I couldn't, and I realized it's because it's woven throughout everything in my ePortfolio. And I think this is because my background is in post-colonial studies um, and studying um, oppression and how people find who they are and find their voice in the face of oppression. And so you can kind of see that as you work through the portfolio. I mean, that first sentence, right? My equity-minded, student-centered, data-driven approach. Um, but I think, so I talk about my faculty experience, faculty leadership experience, but I think where it really comes together is down in this bottom section. And I'm going to make it a little bigger so you can see, because I think the books matter a lot. Um, for me, this is really the breakdown of like, if we know who we are and we understand our distinct identities, I think that really helps us to be able to sit with and support people while they're working through their own identities. And so that's kind of what I really wanted to think through here. Um, naming just accountability partners, I think it's really valuable. For me, an e-portfolio is not an end product where we look at what, what is the best work that we've done and showcase that. Instead, when we're doing it in an academic environment, it's about discovering who we are, finding out what we value, how do we matter, how do we see ourselves in the curriculum, um, how does it connect to us and transform who we are or how we think, or how do we have vulnerable moments that maybe transform other people, right? But they may, may maybe were really hard and uncomfortable for us because people were trying to learn about an identity. For example, um, as an asexual person, if I come out of the closet, it's a 20 minute discussion about what that means, right? Every single time. And so how do we like make the e-portfolio a vulnerable space where we can work through that and start to build bridges across differences and build those connections? Um, so that was a big piece of my e-portfolio, just welcome. I also put in my philosophy, I added an e-portfolio philosophy in addition to my teaching philosophies. I also added my evergreen transcript so that people can see that kind of narrative grading model in case people are interested in that. It just offers like a different way to think about education. Like here it shows my courses, but then it goes into these really detailed overviews of me as a learner from my professors, which is kind of a cool thing. For presentations, I actually did create a section that was dedicated to social justice work and the things that I'm really passionate about there. And I tried to keep it pretty honest instead of just talking about the end results. So I started it all the way back um, when I led a team on healing racism and I provided some documents to help people so that if they wanna continue to do equity work in this kind of vein where they're having really vulnerable conversations about racial identity and stuff like that, um, or dismantling um, racist ideas within themselves, that they have some kind of guidelines to help them work through that process. Um, so there's just some resources here. We created like an anti-racist activism page that shows like the different lanes, because some people are only at the self-reflection, right? They're just able to start looking at their work, whereas that sometimes you have people who are ready to get out there and make active change. Um, so I also added in some of my work with, um, we created a La Plata surge chapter. I'm not sure if anybody here is familiar with that, but it's showing up for racial justice. And uh, I worked with Southwest Movement for Black Lives for a while. And what happened, they had a really traumatic experience because when George Floyd was murdered, many people came forward and said, we want to help. We're allies. We're in this with you. We really want to support you. And then they created a weekly Vigil in the Park series that they did for an entire year. About six months into it, 
the people that were supporting started taking over. And um, it was mostly white movement, like movement supporters saying, you've got to do it this way. This is the better way. This is more effective. They asked them to cancel a protest. Um, and then they tried to like cut them off from the community. And it was a really traumatic experience and something in a small town that we had to try to navigate together. Like, how do we keep moving things forward, but also support black leaders as they're trying to create and carve out a space for themselves in a community that um, often doesn't see them and often does things that really hurt them and they don't have support for it. And so we created this uh, surge chapter to do education and to try to make some changes in the school district and stuff like that, because there were a lot of things that were going unaddressed. Um, so this just provides kind of a reflection on that. Um, and then I get into more academic stuff like working with Jobs for the Future and competency-based um, education network to design a competi or an equity-based toolkit to help people implement CBE. Um, from there, I did add, this is one of the things I'm actually most proud of right here in my ePortfolio because this is how do we actually create an equitable work environment in academia. And I did a presentation with one of my coworkers, Gwen Spotted Elk, on, um, I mean, the, what she said was, I've never had an experience in academia where I, I walked up to the table and felt like there was a place that was already set for me. And that's huge, right? That's the really powerful statement. Um, and so that's what we talked about in this presentation was what does it mean to think about academia as a whole, right? Even if we're not just focusing on students, but as a community, how do we make it more of a space of belonging and mattering so that everybody can fit into the, into the area and feel welcomed and like their voices are matter and are important. Um, that actually led to me doing a facilitation thing for Howard Hughes Medical Institute. And so I kind of showcased uh, this one was a big learning thing and it's got questions. It's very vulnerable because I didn't have answers. I showed up with a bunch of STEM educators. I know nothing about STEM. They were using words I did not understand frequently to talk about genetics. And I was trying to support them and thinking through like, I just know how to build a container. I just know how to have the hard conversation. I don't know how to do these pieces. Um, but that was actually what they needed. They needed the container building support. They didn't know how do I do this in a way where we can have that hard conversation and maybe people feel hurt and upset, but we come back and we heal and we recover from it so that we can keep moving forward and keep digging into the difficult stuff. Um, so that's my e-portfolio. I think I've been talking for a long time. So I'm gonna hop just really quickly over to um, one thing we can do in academia is create team agreements. And this is a really powerful way to create equity is just to really sit down and say, this is what I need to be safe in the workspace. Um, so this is an example of what our e-portfolio team has created for our community agreement and how we make sure that, like, for example, we commit to transformative justice with each other instead of saying, like, I'm going to go to higher ups and have a problem. Instead, we're going to sit down, we're going to work it through. Um, and then this last piece is just real quick. We are trying out community portfolios where we're studying Jedi issues and thinking through them together. And here is an example of how we're having different community members come in and talk about, here's what I'm afraid of. Here's what I'm most scared of in trying to create that welcoming space. And we use this as a launch point into our group discussions. And they've actually asked for more because they are so empowered by the conversations that we're having. that They've come to us and said, can we have one more session? And then we just heard from them two days ago and they said, can we have another? Um, so that's really exciting in a time when everybody's exhausted, overwhelmed and tired to have people say, I want more work. I wanna dig more into this hard stuff. Okay, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Martin. And thanks so much for listening. All right, let me, so I have shared my e-portfolio on the chat, so I guess anyone wants to see that. However, as my perspective is gonna be a bit more different than the rest of, my peers and the fact that I am still technically a student. And so my focus on where it comes to equity is more in terms of the community and international issues. And so on my e-portfolio, it still follows the same basis of a student as what, what they would see. So coursework goals and outcomes and whatever they wanna do. However, when I focus more on equity, I focus more in terms of my community and so, as I've mentioned before, I have been very involved with 
interfaith movements as well as nonpartisan movements and the such. And so I've been working very hard in order to connect these connections and to also demonstrate that e-portfolio isn't just an academic issue. It's also something that others can embrace as well, such as different religious movements, political movements, businesses, and the such. And so, for example, here, I have, I've made websites for different companies and churches and things like that. So for me, it's very important to combat issues such as stereotypes or maybe very sectarian issues that you may face. We know right now in the United States is a very tough and toxic issue that we may have right now. And so for me, what's important is to show people the true side of you and not just what people may be saying about yourself. And so here you could see I've been working a lot on faith relations with different groups such as Hinduism, Sikhism, Judaism, Islam, Baha'ism, and native religions as well. And so here you could see one example of a website that I've made for the Islamic Society of Bosniaks here in our state. And also I've been working on this business relations as well in terms of how can we get businesses to be more communicative with our community, such as in terms of language issues, gender issues, and as well as just stereotypical issues that one may face in their day-to-day -day life in order to make you feel welcome to a business or a church and also how to make just anyone else that works in that company feel more at home, I'd say. And so that's what my focus has been more on as a student and as a staff member. As I've been doing this for two years now, I still have a lot to learn. However, I think that equity isn't something that we should be taking for granted. It should be something that we should develop and foster as a community and as educational institutions. We should focus a lot more on how can we make our students feel welcome in terms of introducing them to e-portfolios and how can we enrich their educational mindset and community? And so my focus is a bit more short compared to my peers here, but that's why I want to focus more on is just how can we make people feel welcome and positive about them? And so I'll, I'll toss it back here to Emily and the such. Yeah, thank you, Martin. We're going to move into dyads, and Lucy is going to kind of walk us through how to set that up. Yeah, great. Thank you, Martin. That's awesome. Um, okay, so now comes the interactive portion of our session. And so, yes, we're going to break into um, dyads, fancy term for twos, right? <laughs> Groups of two. <laughs> um, and so what we're going to do is we are going to, there's going to be three different um, there are three different things you could work on potentially depending on what you want to work in, work on. And you're going to then just break into a group with another person and you can, you can work on, um, the one that you want, that you feel like you want to focus on. So the first choice is to either work on a new or existing equity statement or teaching philosophy. Now I realize this is a short time to do that, but maybe you can even just create like some bullet points. Like this is what's important to me in an equity statement, or this is, you know, or if you have already have an equity statement, you might, you might have some ideas of how you want to um, change it or tweak it based off what you've um, done at the conference um, the past two days. So that's the first. And then the second one is you could work on prompts for students for an assignment or reflection in their e-portfolio, right? So those can really help students get um, wrap, wrap their wrap learning around um, equity and issues of social justice. And then the third one is work on, um, you could work on a department or program philosophy that integrates social justice. So those are the three um, and we can, put, um, we can put those in the chat. So then that will be a reminder. And then Amy, if you want to go ahead and you, we're just going to randomly break people up into groups of twos. Yeah, I'm ready be... to open the rooms. We will have one group of three. Great. Should I, I will... open them? Yep. 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 Perfect. So you should have an invitation to join a breakout room. If you can't see that invitation, just go to the bottom of your screen and select the breakout room icon. OK, 
Okay, well, welcome back. We're going to close with Martin. Well, it's been great having everyone here from all these different institutions. I know that ePortfolio still has a lot more to develop in terms of getting its popular notoriety. However, I think that all of us being here demonstrates that there is a future for our programs and that we shouldn't waver in terms of educational pressure or social pressure. And I think that we will be able to demonstrate in the near future that the portfolio is something worth fighting for and the benefits of it will be insurmountable. And so I just like to thank all of you guys for coming in here to view our program. I know that some of you are, are either on the East Coast or West Coast and maybe quite tired, but it's nice seeing all of you guys here. And I wish you all the best in these struggling times. Can we take a moment to thank all of our presenters for their thoughtful um, and wonderful ePortfolio example?